passengers. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Zero Project Conference 2022 Fireside Talk. We are right in the thick of lunch break, and we have perhaps the most tasty treat of today's lunch break, which is a wonderful Fireside Talk with Craig Spence and Jared Klein about We the 15. So I'm very glad, and I see Craig and Jared in the call already, so they're on time, so thank you for that. And uh, without further ado, what I will do is briefly visually describe myself and then hand over to Craig and Jared to do the same. They will also tell you about their titles and affiliations. They work for wonderful organizations a lot of you will be familiar with, and a lot of you might be familiar with Craig and Jared already, but nevertheless, we want to give them the opportunity to also introduce themselves and then we'll delve into what will be a 30-minute fireside talk, so a double session here at the Zero Project uh, Conference 2022. <coughs> um, a majority of our fireside talks are 50 minutes in duration, but we really have a fantastic campaign which we'll be talking about, namely We the 15, and that truly deserves time and attention. So my name is Ram Tim Weiss. I am the manager here uh, of the public sector at the Zero Project. For those of you who can perhaps hear me but not see me, I'm a white male in his early 30s. I have a cast around my right hand because I just recently tore my tendon. So, um, yeah, a bit painful. Therefore, I'm only wearing a rolled-up dress shirt, wearing a black tie. I have short, cropped black hair, which is receding the times of age, <laughs> as you may and uh, what I would like to do is hand over to Craig to introduce himself um, as the first speaker of today. Thanks, Robin. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Spence. I'm the Chief Brand and Communications Officer for the International Paralympic Committee. For those of you who can't see me, I'm a white male, uh, very receding. I've shaven all my hair off recently. Uh, I wear spectacles, and today I'm wearing a blue jumper. And I will let you into the fact that I am working from home, and as you can't see my legs, I'm actually wearing shorts. Um, I, during my day job, is working for the International Paralympic Committee as Chief Brand and Communications Officer. So that is predominantly working on the Paralympic Games. So tomorrow I am flying to Beijing, ready for the Paralympic Winter Games that open on the 4th of March. So I look after all the communication elements for the IPC and was proud to work with the team at IDA to spearhead the launch of WIDA 15 in August last year. Over to you, Jared, please. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jared Klein. I'm a human rights advisor for the International Disability Alliance. I'm based in Geneva um, and I mainly work uh, Human Rights Council and, and the World Health Assembly. Uh, I'm also I'm a white man with shortly cropped, receding grayish hair, um, white shirt, and a um, floral uh, blue and pink tie. Um, really happy to be here. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Craig. So we're here live from the United Nations office at Vienna, and behind me you can probably see the commotion of our participants uh, walking around, and a lot of them, I'm sure have heard about We The 15, maybe have even seen the wonderful advertisement campaign which went out last year during uh, the Tokyo Olympics. But for those perhaps who have not, would you like to summarize in the essence what We The 15 is? And then I think we can delve a bit more into the details, what has been achieved so far, and a bit more about the roadmap of what lies ahead. And Craig and Jared, what I want to say is you probably don't see this, but to the left of me, there's a very diligent and creative graphic artist, and maybe the cameraman can pan uh, to the right, and we can see her starting to draw up some very great um, visual representations of what we're talking about. So at the end of the fireside talk, we'll, we'll pan over to her, and she'll uh, summarize in a visual manner what we spoke about. So I just wanted to... you for everyone online and in person to have the full picture here at the Fireside Talk. Um, but perhaps back to We The 15. So in a nutshell, what are we talking about? Yeah, I'd say in a nutshell, We, we The 15 aspires to be the world's biggest 
uh, human rights campaign representing the world's 15% with disabilities. It's a 10-year movement stroke campaign that aims to provoke global conversations around the rights of persons with disabilities and most importantly, initiate change. And for the first time ever, 20 international organizations spearheaded by the IPC and the International Disability Alliance have come together to make it happen. Talking about the International Disability Alliance and also kind of the very, let's say, loaded world, loaded words, world's biggest um, human rights movement. I wanted to ask, what differentiates We the 15 from, say, other disability campaigns or other advocacy campaigns? Yeah, I mean, I think the um, the key point from Ida's perspective is the way in which so many diverse stakeholders have come together and that, that sounds a bit bureaucratic but it but it means that there's buy-in not just at the grassroots level but right to the, the very top top of organizations um at the un business and sport and um and also for us it really is about uh leveraging the power of sport for good for human rights advancements um we have a great framework, the CRPD, uh, which the disability movement fought very hard for 15 or so years ago. Uh, there's inclusion in, in various other international instruments, but what we do find is that the words on paper are not enough. Continuous uh, effort across all sectors at all levels, um, uh, and something inspirational is really necessary to keep that progress driving forward. And I think that's the real value add of, of We the 15 and, and the immense potential on it. That sounds interesting. And I'm wondering, with such a great roster of uh, founding organizations being on board, which have all come together, um, we are now more than half a year into the campaign. Recapping and looking back and also looking forward, what have we achieved so far with We The 15? I think we've achieved a lot. I think but there's still much, 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 much more to do. I think what have we achieved? Well, first of all, for the first time ever, we've brought a, together this coalition of international organizations covering sport, uh, human rights, uh, civil society, uh, and various other sectors and said, look, let's put our egos at the door and let's work towards a common goal, which is advancing the rights of the world's 15% with disabilities. So that in its, in its own right was a, uh, a significant achievement. Since then, we've obviously launched We The 15 we launched it around the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics and we've generated a lot of awareness for the campaign so the film that we launched which was 90 seconds long and shown in 70 countries as well as the opening ceremony of Tokyo 2020 that's been seen by three quarters of a billion people the media coverage alone for the launch of We The 15 reached 6.2% billion people. That's equivalent to 80% of the planet's population. So we've got a lot of awareness. And the research is also showing that every one in five people around the world is aware of We The 15, which is a stunning, stunning success, bearing in mind we only launched in, in August. We've now got the awareness, which is great. But I dare say we've not achieved what we want to do, which is change. And now it's, to chime, it's time to change awareness into actions and that's what, that, that's what you will see with phase two of We The 15 that we'll roll out later this year. Jared, right. is there anything to add on to that? Go ahead, Jared. So I'm just trying to unmute myself. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, I think the, the awareness raising is key, and, and it sounds at a certain level um, uh, easy, but actually it's very difficult because... Um, and it's at the heart of the convention, one of the value adds of the CRPD was Article 8, and, and it's really fundamental that attitudes about persons with disabilities inform historically, unfortunately, very negative policies and practices. So if we can change mindsets, then we can change the world. And I think that's why the, the We 15 campaign and the video is, is so great. Um, here in Geneva, when I talk with, with the states, we have a resolution, the Human Rights Council on Sports and Disability uh, coming up. Um, and people are aware of the campaign and it really has, I think, shifted, at least moved the needle a little bit and focused priorities on the, on these issues in a way that uh, had been lagging a little bit. You know, there are, it's a cyclical process, I suppose, but um, we really need to build on the momentum that we've generated thus far. 
So one can say it really has a cross-sectoral approach to it, starting with sports and as uh, Jared, as he mentioned, translating now also into the public sphere, trying to aware raise awareness there. Perhaps I'm curious about the reception which We The 15 initially got when it was presented in Tokyo also among athletes, because I think athletes are usually kind of the first front uh, individuals we engage with. Everyone kind of wants to have that star athlete, para-athlete as part of their advocacy campaign. And I'm wondering if you could share a bit with our audience kind of how they perceived We The 15 and kind of the input or their wishes which they passed along to you as you presented the campaign. Yeah, the, the feedback we received from the athletes was 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 really good. I think in hindsight, we could have done a better job getting the athletes on, on board with We The 15 for the launch. You've got to remember that last year was the first Paralympic Games ever organized during a pandemic. So there was lots of information that the athletes needed to take in ahead of the games in terms of uh, how would the, the games run uh, with all the protocols that were put in place to ensure safe games. But the athletes who engaged with the campaign, they were really receptive. They said it was long overdue. Um, they loved the fact that they realized now that they are global sports stars like anyone else. And with that comes a, a, some responsibility in their role models. And they've also got a platform to engage global audiences. So we had a number of athletes who acted as spokespeople for the campaign uh, when we launched last August in Australia, in the UK, in the US. And that was really good to hear from the athletes. And the athletes, I think, now feel a sense of responsibility that, that, that their actions and their performances is not just about them as a person, but it's how can we work together to transform the lives of 1.2 billion people. It's, uh, there's, there's a perception in the world also that people watch the Paralympic Games and they see persons with disabilities and they think, oh, every athlete can run 100 meters in this in this short space of time or do these amazing achievements. And we've got to change that mindset that actually there's 1.2 billion people out there, 15% of the world, uh, and we need to initiate change for them. And if our athletes can help do that, then then fantastic. And, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more from our athletes in the coming weeks as well. So with the momentum of 750 million people pushing you forward, you touched upon phase two of uh, We The 15. Would you like to delve into some details and share with us, is this something where the general audience, where the person watching this YouTube live stream can be involved? And if yes, how? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we the fifteen will will have two strands to it going forward as we as we embark on phase two. Um, the uh, the first strand is a campaigning arm, and we will uh, initiate campaigns aligned with the Paralympic Games in 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 Paris in twenty twenty four, Milan in twenty twenty six, and LA in twenty twenty eight, and we'll focus on different strands of the campaign. So, in Paris, the campaign will switch from awareness to one around attitudes and barriers uh, facing persons with disabilities. In 2026, with Milan and the Paralympic Winter Games there, we'll start to focus on attitudes and stigma before embarking on representation and participation in society in 2028. So that's the campaigning side of We The 15 going forward. Below that sits the movement. And what we want to develop is a We The 15 network that anyone in the world can contribute towards. So later this year, we're going to be launching something called Purple Pledges. And this is uh, an initiative where anyone in the world can commit to an action, what they will do either as an organization, a government, a business, or as a, a member of the public, what are they going to do to, to, to drive social inclusion for the world's 1.2 billion persons with disabilities? Those commitments will be aligned with the Global Disability Summit, um, and we'll be launching the Purple Pledges probably around uh, 3rd of December, International Day of Persons with Disabilities, um, so later this year. But around the Beijing Paralympics coming up, we'll be, again, continuing to raise awareness of the, the, the new campaign uh, during the opening ceremony on the 4th of March. So we really can all look forward to December then to see how, as an organization and as an individual, we will be able to commit to these Purple Pledges. And uh, I'd love to get back to Jared and uh, ask a question about the International Disability Alliance and its role in the campaign. I think one of the key strengths of the IDA is the global representation it has. 
And I'm wondering, you know, some people might look at this campaign and say, well, is it enough if David Beckham posts on Instagram about We the 15? What about the global south? What about individuals in socioeconomic conditions which are more precarious, which do not have uh, the luxuries of having high-end prosthetics? And is We the 15 a campaign for them as well? And if yes, how can they get involved? Yeah, I, mean, I think that you're right. It needs to be an absolutely is a campaign for all. Um, the reality is that the situation of persons with disabilities, whether in the global north or global south, uh, is one of, of extreme marginalization and discrimination and can take different forms, but, but it still exists. And in a way, the attitudes about disability and about persons with disabilities are, are, at, the, are at the heart of that. Um, the International Disability Alliance is, is a membership based organization. So we have um, uh, a regional network and, and over a thousand members, which are predominantly global south organizations. Um, and, and we've seen good buy-in there also. I think that um, uh, the potential as countries develop economically to shape their policies in a way uh, that doesn't build barriers, I think is really is fundamental. And that's something that we the campaign and the pledges can definitely help with. Um, I mean, it's a supplement to the CRPD obligations, to the SDGs and to all the other frameworks, but um, what it really can do is to um, bring the, uh, focus the minds of, of decision makers um, to make sure that they make the right choices. Uh, and it's, it's not about um, income levels of country, it's not about high-end prosthetics per se, um, it's really about not building barriers, eliminating discrimination, um, not building institutions. So it's, sometimes it's about what not to do in, in, as well as what you must positively do. No, I think that's a very valid point, Jared. And I think that's what aligns We the 15 with the Zero Project, which was one of the 20 founding organizations of the campaign. And I think it's really to look and take a solution-oriented approach and to understand that uh, we need to mainstream in all societies and in all spheres of uh, society to really to push forward the envelope of the essence of what we, we the 15 is. Um, and perhaps uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm wondering also for the viewer at home, if he or she says, wonderful, I want to get involved. What are some resources you could share with them as kind of a first step and as a first touching point with the campaign and how they can become an ally for We the 15? I think the first thing people can do is is follow we the 15 on twitter and instagram um so really simple to do share the campaign film because actually the campaign film is not just about building awareness it's really provoked a lot of reaction the amount of people who who didn't realize that 15 percent in the world had disabilities and also there's many people who who come to me who who don't have a disability going do you know what i never really imagined that persons with disabilities got married or had children or or, or had normal lives so uh, the, the the film is a is a key thing for us to share at the moment is really because it's 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 changing people's mindset because when people think about inclusion they're only thinking in, in, in either gender, sexual or, orientation or ethnicity. They're not always thinking disability, despite the fact that it intersects the three things. So follow the social media sites, share the We The 15 film, and have a look at wethe15.org, the website as well, and tell all your friends about what we're trying to achieve and start thinking about what your purple pledge could be this December when we launch the platform um, and try and engage anyone you know in the campaign because change needs to start in the local community and that means anyone can make a contribution to this campaign whether you're a member of the public a business leader a government official or a city mayor everyone can initiate change let me ask you then craig and jared are there any teasers you can give us and the audience in regards to the type of pledges we could make something to you know some homework for everyone uh, watching Shall I take that one, Jared? Or do you want to? Sure. Uh, you, you go first. I'll, I'll, I'll see what you say, and then I'll, I'll add to it. So what we've, tr what we've done is <clears throat> there's, there's two ways you can make a pledge. We've come up with a menu of commitments uh, for the various seven areas that we're looking at, which is cities, uh, academia, uh, governments, businesses, uh, media outlets, and such like. So there's a menu of commitments. So you can choose from the set menu, or you can go a la carte and come up with your own commitment. So the homework for people could be just coming up with our own commitment. I mean, if you're a 
if you're a leader of an organization, um, how many persons with disabilities are in your workforce? Uh, any advertising campaigns that you do, how many persons with disabilities have featured in your TV commercials or your marketing literature? Is your workplace fully accessible? Things like that uh, are the commitments that we're going to be looking for. And um, on my side, I think as sort of preliminary homework, um, as Craig did, watch the, watch the video, think about your attitudes and, and mindset about persons with disabilities, talk to persons with disabilities, talk to organizations of persons with disabilities, if, if you know some local ones. And it, even just basics, often accessibility is a really is a really obvious entry point, um, excuse the pun, um, in that look at where you live. Um, if, you were, if you were a wheelchair user, could you get around? Could you get from your home to your workplace? Um, could you go to the pub? Could you watch sports? Um, uh, unfortunately, in many places, you couldn't. It's it's you know only the first step in global transformation. But I think um, just look at your immediate environment and and um, yeah and reflect on what the lives of persons with disabilities are like. Are they included in the community in your community or not? Very valid points. Thank you for that. Um, since we have the luxury to talk, so to say, to the masterminds behind the campaign, and we have quite some. Um, I think uh, experienced individuals and organizations on the ground here in Vienna as well at the Zero Project Conference. Are there any lessons learned you would like to share having you know, undertaken this colossal effort with this global campaign with dozens of global organizations being on board, streamlining different interests, streamlining different cultural approaches? Having launched this and having you know had metrics to show, I'm sure there are also things which did not go as smoothly. And in <coughs> hindsight, what would you like to share as lessons learned from this global campaign to our audience? Well, let's. I think when people think of lessons learned, they always think of the negatives that they need to do better next time. But let's start with a, a, a real key lesson learned for us was the world is switching on to disability inclusion like never before. So the, the, there are many organizations that, that, that I think for me tell me that the time is now for us to act and really push on this subject. So every global organization we have spoken to, whether that's Coca-Cola, the UN, or other organizations, when we've said to them and said, this is what we're wanting to achieve, they're saying, fantastic, we want in. We have behind We The 15, one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world and three of the biggest public relations agencies in the world working for us, valuing kind to support We The 15 because they realize this is the right thing to do for society. So that's been a key learning for us is there's a real positivity around this and, 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 and don't be scared to ask the difficult questions because I think previously we'd have got a no, we're now getting a yes. That's the first key key learning, I think, from our side. The other thing was, I think, another thing we look at is the planning of this. I mean, we took 18 months to get it to the launch phase. And it sounds like a very long time, but actually we could have done with an extra six months. Because if I, if, if I look back at what we've achieved, and we got some research last week on this, yes, we got great global awareness, but... And, and, Two and minute our notice. Objective is, our objective is to engage the 85%. But actually, many disability rights groups around the world said they were unaware of the campaign. And actually, it's really important that we, we do this journey, that we take the 15% along with us, because if they're not backing us, then it's not going to be as successful as we want it to be. So those are the two key learnings from my side. Jared? Yeah, and I think for me, it's about um, keeping the message simple. Um, in Vienna, I'm sure you have you know a wide range of technical agencies, and same here in Geneva. And things can get legally complicated; they can get complicated in policy terms. But um, the message has to be simple and understandable for all. I think that that's um, for me personally been the biggest challenge um, and a really really important lesson to learn that um, people won't be won over by sophisticated legal arguments. Uh, it's about clarity of vision. And I'll summarize all of that with empathy and kindness. It does exist, and I think We The 15 is a marvelous example for that. And as mentioned, I would love to end this fireside talk by paneling over 
to Petra Plitschka, our very, very talented graphic facilitator who has been with us many years. She feels like she's part of the Zero Project family. And I'll let her talk a bit about what she was able to capture in this session. OK. What did I capture? We the 15 refers to 1.2 billion people, 15% of the world population living with a disability. Um, the project itself started only like six months ago. And in a nutshell, it's the biggest human rights movement, not only from grassroots, but up all, all up to the top. Um, what did we achieve until now? You achieved um, awareness, big awareness. Yes, there is still more to go, but big achievement was um, positive feedback from the athletes, being seen as um, fully uh, capable sports people. So big awareness has been achieved, but the challenge is to create change, change of mindset and of attitudes. And that's why you are going to have a campaigning app and building a global network. Um, the global network should not, I only drew like the north of the world, so I added, don't forget the global south, because there is a lot of networking also on the way. And the question was, how can we be part of this? And I heard that there is a, mo um, a menu of commitments so that people can do the purple pledge, so they can either look at their menu that they can find on your website, or they can come up with their own ideas on how to support um, athletes with disabilities and people with disabilities all around the world. What else can we do? Um, follow the campaign on Twitter, Instagram, look at the film, and also ask yourself, what is your purple pledge? What would you be doing? What can you contribute? And the biggest key findings and the uh, key issues were, one is the time is now. It's the right time to create awareness about and for people with disabilities and also have a clear and simple message. That's the simple message, hopefully, from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Uh, you, you can see Craig's uh, amazement that you are a wizard with your markers, which is uh, uh, why we love to have you at the conference to really capture also in a visual manner so everyone learns differently, be it verbally or visually. And with that being said, the time is now. The time is now to wrap up this fireside talk, and the time is now for you to all step away from your screen and start working on your purple pledges.